if these men are, say, men, where do they learn that kind of tactic from? From liberal scholars, right. from modernist scholars, because they use that same tactic against Christians. Creationism is pseudoscience. You don't have a respectable doctorate degree from these kind of schools, and then blah, 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 blah. See, that's the mentality that these Christian scholar, scholars borrowed. So it's basically a pit of, being a pitiful loser bully. That's what they are. So these guys can't stand up against the modernist scholars. And like James White, you'll just tremble when you debate Bart Ehrman because he doesn't know much Greek and Hebrew compared to Bart Ehrman. But when he talks to somebody who doesn't know as much as he does, then he picks on him. That's, that's just weakness. That shows how much of a sissy and a weak person you are. Trying to pick on someone weaker than you, that is belittling. That is stupidity. You know why I really kick these guys? They try, I hate it when they belittle people. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that kind of attitude. In this church, you got to realize that you're just as a wicked sinner as anybody else. You're just as weak as anybody else. You're not smarter than anyone. In this kind of church, I stress so, much, so many times about getting rid of that judgmental, critical attitude because we are all flaws. We're all imperfect. There's one thing that I cannot stand is some spiritual pharisaical Sadducee and Pharisee where I go all Matthew 23 on them on all fours. Okay, what are you talking about, Pastor? Read Matthew 23 in your homework time, okay? Read Matthew 23, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. Zero respect. Zero respect. Zero respect for these guys. Amen. Okay, so let's talk about these Greek scholars. Now, the problem with these men is that they're used by the devil. Why don't you use Greek and Hebrew lexicons and dictionaries and these scholars to critique your King James Bible? Because they're satanic. Satanic Greek and Hebrew scholars. Oh, I can't believe you said that. They love Jesus Christ, pastor. They treasure the word of God, pastors. That's why they're trying to make it more genuine and more real. Yeah, after 200 translations, it shows how sincere these people are. Yeah. So, oh, pastor, you know, why would you call them satanic? Well, the thing is, is that, uh, let's see, the evidence speaks for itself. By their fruits, ye shall know them. So let's look at several of these famous people, okay? Now, before you panic... When I write certain names out and you go, oh, I don't like it when you mention so-and-so's name. Well, I guess you better throw away that dictionary now once I mention this person's name. So we got J. J. Henry Thayer right here. Oh, no, not Thayer. I own that. Well, I, sorry, he's wrong, okay? <laughs> J. Henry Thayer was a Unitarian who denied the deity of Christ. You're going to use his lexicon, huh? Okay, so this one is documented at Thayer's Greek English Lexicon of the New Testament. Baker Book House, 1977. Look at Roman numeral page 7. A.T. Robertson's Greek Grammar. He's very famous. I, I used his lexicon. A.T. Robertson. My dad has his whole volume, so I use his Greek grammar from time to time. He states in its preface... The text of Westcott and Hort. Westcott and Hort, the guys who are Alexandrian manuscript, is followed in all its essentials. Wow, so you want to go by A.T. Robertson, huh? He's going to go by Alexandrian, corrupt Alexandrian manuscript. All its essentials follow. This is found at A Man of, Tal of, a Man of Ten Talents, uh, a portrait of Richard Shevenick's Trench, by Bromley, page 244. Oh no, actually that's going to be quoted by R.C. Trench here. So I'm going to give R.C. Trench. A.T. Robertson, you just look at its preface. R.C. Trench, author of the synonyms of the New Testament, quote, found a spiritual significance in Jewish, Mahometan, and even pagan legends. And that's found at A Man of Ten Talents, the book, page 244. So that's by R.C. Trench, Synonyms of the New Testament. When they quote you Greek and Hebrew, ask them this, who are you quoting from? And then when they mention one of these big names there, then you tell them, oh, didn't you know that person did this? What? I didn't know. So these guys, they would sooner go to their dictionaries rather than looking at the person's life here and see how the Lord used him. Here's another one, Charles A. Briggs of the New Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew-English Lexicon. 
He said the Bible was filled with scientific errors, misstatements, historical mistakes, and crudities. <laughs> uh, Walter K. Hewton's book, Neely, Neely's History of the Parliament of Religions, 3rd edition, 1893, 292 to 297. Vine, have you ever heard of Vine's book, Vine's Exposition? Dictionary of the New Testament words, that's pretty famous. Vine, he approved the drinking of alcohol, and then he tried to support it with his Greek interpretation. So this is found at Percy Ruoff at W. E. Vine, his life and ministry, page 26 and page 120. Jesenius, author of the Old Testament Hebrew lexicon. Jesenius is extremely famous for Hebrew. You're going to hear that name quite often. It's mostly based off of him. Quote, accepted a position in the Roman Catholic Gymnasium back in 1809. This is by the New Shop Herzog Encyclopedia, Volume 4, 1909, page 477. Frederick W. Danker. I remember I used his work one time. Danker is also famous. author of a Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament and other early Christian literature, believed, quote, Jesus, from the standpoint of the system, was a liberal and a nonconformist. This is found at Frederick Danker's work, Jesus and the New Age. 1972 edition, page 108. 108. Another person right here, George Ricker Berry. I currently own that, his interlinear. Interlinear Greek New Testament. He subtracted many words from the Bible, just like the other modern Bible translations. This can be found in certain passages. All you have to do is look at his interlinear Greek English New Testament in Luke 17, verse 36, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, 1 John chapter 2, verse 23, and Mark chapter 2, verse 15. Now think about this. Um, what did the Bible say at Revelation 22 when you take away words from his book? A lot of people will think that this Barry guy, that he might be in line with KJV advocates, but no, he lines up right here with Alexandrians and subtracting texts now. Now, who's the most famous one that a lot of people use, including fundamentalist churches? We all use this guy. I use him too. Strong's Concordance. James Strong. What was his issue? His issue was that he was a member of the corrupt ASV committee, of which Chairman Philip Schaff commented that he only, Schaff commented, he only chose members who denied the inspiration of the scriptures to be in his ASV committee. This is found at David Schaff's work, at The Life of Schaff, 1897, page 439, page 351, page 357, as well as pages 434 to 435. So we got to understand right here that these were great godly men that we should respect and honor, and every word that they say is actually Bible. Who are these people listening to, man? Who are these people listening to? Well, before they picked up their book, did they ever look at these people? They didn't even try it. Now, the thing is this, is that here's the standard text of Greek and Hebrew scholars. Now, they got their new edition now, okay? But this is the one that's been going on for many years, until probably last year or two years ago. They got another new edition. This is their 28th edition, so you just have to wait for the 29th and the 30th until they finally get the right Bible, I guess, these people. But anyway, these people right here, this is the standard of all Greek and Hebrew scholars on manuscripts, okay? This is the standard right here. Now, you know why I have a great distrust of Greek Hebrew scholars, especially those who support modern Bibles? Why is that, Pastor? Because their head organization said this. If you think all these were bad enough, you should look at these scholars here, what they said. When they created this text, they said this, quote, the text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by Bible societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies, it has served as the basis for new translations 
and for revisions made under their supervision. Ah, Catholic Bibles. They just admitted it right there. Catholic Bibles. Judas White says, oh, no, we, we're not. I, I teach against the Catholic. I'm not for the Catholic. I teach against the Catholic. I teach against the Catholic. Yeah, picking and choosing which Catholic belief you want and which Catholic belief you reject. Why? Because you always pick and choose which Greek and Hebrew interpretation you like for your argument that makes sense. See, his final authority is his own bald head. That's why he has to shave it. <laughs> These, I show zero respect, zero respect to those kind of people. I know, maybe what I've done is unwise, unloving, but people like that deserve, deserve to be kicked. He deserved the kicking all this time. These wicked, revision, these wicked scholars, I, I disdain them. I disdain their attitude toward KJV-only people. I disdain it. Uh, let's uh, read some quotations right here. This is by their official head, Kurt Allen, okay? The guy who's the head of the Nestle Allen text today. You know what they said? There is no doubt that this is all bound with Catholicism. Quote, they were intended to meet the overwhelming competition of the popular Nestle edition, which was circulating widely, even in Roman Catholic circles. The fact that the Nestle text, that's that blue book that I showed you, was produced by the Bible societies, which were still under official Catholic proscription only aggravated the situation by Kurt Allen and Barbara Allen, the text of the New Testament, Grand Rapids, Ermans, 1987, page 26. Kurt Allen himself admitted at page 30, what of the present scene where the reader of the Greek New Testament now meets the new standard text? By this we mean the text officially published and distributed by the United Bible Societies and also officially by the Catholic Church a significant new factor in the present scene. Here's another one on page 35. In any event, the new standard text is a reality, and as the sole text distributed by the United Bible Societies and by the corresponding offices of the Roman Catholic Church, an inconceivable situation until quite recently. Yeah, inconceivable, yeah. You know what that is? New World Order, see? New World Order, all religions uniting. Oh, we're not, we're not. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are, you hypocrite, you liar. All right, here's another one. It was disclosed in the 1987 annual report of the United Bible Societies that of, quote, of the 573 current UBS projects of scripture translation, there is active Roman Catholic participation in 161, and there have been over 160 interconfessional Bibles and New Testaments published since 1968. This represents a massive increase in Roman Catholic influence over the work of Bible translation in the past. How long? 20 years only. Oh, yeah, we're, we're against the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah, your record still sh shows that. Documented by the Trinitarian Bible Society quarterly record, April to June 1989, page 12. Okay, now you know what these people are going to do? Oh, you're just picking and choosing about these people's lives, and we can do the same thing with the KJB translators. Didn't you know that they were baby sprinklers? Didn't you know that they were Episcopalians? Didn't you know that they also believe that we can improve a new translation? Didn't you know? Uh, well, okay, here's the thing. I'll tell you one thing, though. I'll tell you one thing, though. They were anti-Catholic. Yep. What do you all share in common right here? Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Here's the point. I don't care, baby sprinkler or not, God used a murderer to write his book named Moses. God used an adulterer to write his book named David. It doesn't matter. But here's something that you better hear now. The ones who deliver the words from the Holy Spirit is not lost, wicked people. They cannot understand the spiritual things of God. Now, do you think that those men at the Catholic Committee were saved people? Who in your right mind then would you have them translate your precious holy Bible? Amen. Who in your right mind, man? Yeah. Let's say, discount all of this. Let's say I twisted the documentation. Discount all of this. You got your official Nestle Allen, man. Especially your Kurt Allen, the guy who's ahead. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We'll read verse 13. 
which things also we speak, not in the words, amen, which man's wisdom teacheth. Ah, so there's a problem with your wisdom then. It's got to be from the Holy Spirit. Let's keep reading. But which the who teacheth, Holy Ghost teacheth. What do we do with the words of God? Look at Greek and Hebrew lex lexicons of lost sinners or comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We compare spiritual with spiritual, scripture with scripture. As the word of God once said, line upon line, precept upon precept, word for word. But, uh, but what about, no, these Roman Catholics, they, they know something about the Bible. They, they have several PhDs, and they know more Greek and Hebrew than you. And look at verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness, Foolishness unto him. Neither can he what? Know them. know them. He can't know them because they are spiritually discerned. Amen. I don't care, man. Yeah. Those guys, Roman Catholics, don't know the spiritual words of God. Right. They don't know. You rely on them to give you the words of God, huh? You have to cave in and pressure to them on their own interpretation and translation, huh? Very, very weird. Now, you, you heard from these documentation, near, uh, all modern Bibles and revisions came from that birth, they admitted, from this Roman Catholic cooperation. There is no doubt all modern Bibles are Roman Catholic Bibles, period, yeah. period. You, get, you better have the King James Bible in your hand Amen. because the Nestle Allen Committee did not even exist that time at 1611 and they disdained the Roman Catholic Church. They were far away from the Roman Catholic Church that time. You're, you guys, on the other hand, are getting too close with them.